Over time, our joints will progressively tighten if they're not given stimulus to do otherwise. Our muscles and tendons, aka the muscle tendon unit, are connected to our joints. We don't want stiff joints because this will place unnatural tension on the tendons and muscles connected to them, which can cause issues like muscle pulls or tendon tears in a non-contact fashion. Joint range training utilizing motions that force the joint capsule to overcome adaptive restriction is the foundation of all other training goals. This is why full range of motion training for the knee joint has led to so many successes with exercises such as the ATG split squat on the ATG system. We need a strong and mobile knee joint in order to have resilient muscles and tendons of that joint. If we're battling aberrant forces internally, we have no shot at demonstrating forces externally. Onto the muscles. Muscles are active components of the connective tissue that create movement in our bodies. Initially thought to solely act through sliding and gliding mechanisms of itty bitty structures in the muscle fibers, it is now being theorized that there's winding mechanisms in play that occur in the muscle, much like the tuning of a spring in order to not waste motion. The greater strength through range demanded of the muscle, the greater tuning of the internal components of these spring-like structures, creating greater stiffness in the muscle. Actively lengthening and firing at long muscle lengths will create the most stiffness and thus adaptation, yielding more strength, more resilience, and more effective energy transfer from the muscle onto the tendon. As you tell the body, I want all of these muscle fibers to be utilized. Do not get rid of any of these springy components and any of these muscle fibers along the length of this muscle tendon unit. And the signal of that sentence is amplified. The more more that you challenge the muscle with different angles, intensities, and ranges of its particular muscle group. If you can't even move the joint into ranges that place tension on that muscle at a long length, you aren't going to maximize these benefits and could even be at risk of rupture due to a lack of give from that joint, rupture of either the ligaments, the tendon, or the muscle itself. We never want internal restriction to prevent us from external activity. Okay, on to the tendon. Tendons are structures that connect muscle to bone and allow the action of the muscle to translate into actual motion. Alfred has really, really tight joints so his don't move quite well. So here's an infographic showing that the tendon is what transmits force to the bone to allow for that movement to occur. In athletic motions, muscles will stretch slightly in order to store energy, then isometrically contract to maintain stability of the joint, whereby the only thing left to move is now the tendon. The isometric contraction of the muscle will pull on that tendon, giving an immense amount of potential energy from these steel rod structures to whiplash the ankle into a subsequent contraction to give you flight either upward or outward. So muscle contraction, is what causes strain on the tendon. This is often where the argument is postulated, why do full range of motion training if this high intensity muscle contraction is where strain on the tendon is improved most? Doesn't that defeat the purpose? But let's go back to what we talked about before. First, the joint. If the tendon connects the muscle to the bone, then that means any restriction present in this joint can affect that tendon. More internal restriction means more unnatural pull on the tendon as you perform a jump, sprint, a change of direction. When the joint is forced to move in space, any internal restriction will pull on that tendon too. Tendon is at a tug of war. So it isn't that the tendon is experienced stretch in these ranges of full range of motion at the ankle. The muscle is. So when this section of the unit is operating effectively, the force will transfer more efficiently from the muscle to the tendon. Without full range of motion training, certain muscle fibers will be tasked with handling a majority of the load. And in my personal opinion, will negatively affect the quality of pull of the muscle on the tendon. In summary, full range of motion training isn't directly for the tendon. It's for the joint and it's for the muscle which sets you up beautifully to begin working on that tendon. So how do we do that? If full range of motion training gives us the opportunity to have healthy and strong tendons, not only for life but for athletic performance, how do we capitalize on this opportunity? What does the science say? Jump training like plyometrics can give you quite the effect in developing tendon stiffness and oftentimes sport will give you quite the baseline level of tendon performance and this is what we advocate for greatly on the ATG system. But research also shows that nearly two times the amount of tendon stiffness can be developed if you perform strong strain training compared to just plyometric training alone. Now, what is strain training? Strain refers to the tendon having tension placed onto it by the muscle from a contraction. Considering the Achilles gastrocnemius muscle tendon unit, research shows that the longer the initial muscle tendon unit length, the greater the tendon strain endured in the subsequent isometric contraction. So this forces you to understand the origin and insertion of the muscles that connect to the tendon in question. For the Achilles, the gastrocnemius muscle spans the knee and connects down to the Achilles at the ankle. So you actually don't want to perform bent knee calf raises if your goal is to put as much strain as possible on the tendon. Instead, you want to elevate the toes and perform these with straight legs so that the gastrocnemius muscle is not in an active, insufficient position. We want it to be at a position that allows it to contract forcefully. If you bend the knee, you bias more so the soleus muscle, which isn't wrong as I explained before, because the more strain you put on the muscle, then the greater efficiency it will be in transferring that contraction to the tendon. There's a
a time and a place for all of these. This is not just a simple straight leg calf raise. Let me demonstrate. So if I attempt to just do a normal straight leg calf raise, I want you to notice something. As I'm performing this motion, the ankle joint is moving in space. So again, for the muscle tendon unit, that means the Achilles is transferring successfully the load from the calf muscles into actual movement. It is not having to endure much strain until the very top. When the motion is completed, the muscle tendon unit is blocked from moving freely. The muscle is stopped in motion. The joint is stopped in motion, forcing the tendon to be the last unit with motion. In this manner, you would need to have a very heavy load in order to get enough muscular contraction that will place strain on that tendon. Not very practical in my honest opinion, especially considering the balance constraints with such loading when attempting to balance out tendon resilience between sides. Conversely, you can start attaining sufficient Achilles strain training with the toes elevated, then pin yourself in such a way that allows you to perform the motion isometrically. So now I'm mimicking the top position of the calf raise in lieu of its joint limit, where the muscle is contracting, but the joint is unable to move. But now I'm doing it at a longer muscle tendon unit length, putting even greater strain on the tendon. You can perform this for three to five seconds at a time. Research showing that if you sum up around three minutes a week, you can make substantial gains in tendon stiffness development. Okay, now getting into the actual exercises I would use for the ankle to build up joint, muscle, and tendon health and resilience for your long-term athletic potential. First, the ankle step. In this exercise, the goal is to just elevate the toes so that when I lower down, I'm pulling and forcing any adaptive restriction in the plantar fascia that is a connected tissue on the bottom of the foot to release, as well as getting strain on the posterior tibialis muscle, a muscle responsible for maintaining an arch of the foot. Upright torso, off leg, toes pointed up, lower down, softly kissing the off leg seal to the ground, pause, explode up. No need to use weight for this exercise. If you have the ATG mobility, box, position yourself so that you can maintain an upright torso. Squeezing the poles on this box allows you to ensure that there's no twisting or compensating off of the ankle, taking load onto other joints instead. Lower down, pause, explode up. End goal is 20 reps at six inches with a two inch heel wedge. Simply regress by lowering the height or taking weight off your feet by putting your hands into the poles. Given that the plantar fascia connects to the back of the ankle, you also get alleviation of restrictions in the posterior joint capsule with this exercise. Onto the ankle split squat. With this exercise, there's a similar effect for that plantar fascia, posterior tib, and posterior joint capsule. But the effect is shifted more towards the fascia, more towards the posterior capsule with the additional stiffness development of the soleus muscle. Staying in this bottom position, calf raising up and sinking down into the stretch, then coming out of it. Torso upright, back leg, you're allowed to bend a little bit because the emphasis is no longer on the hip flexor, but all on this front leg. So you're putting majority of your weight into this front leg as you sink into the bottom position. Feel the stretch on the back of the ankle, and that posterior capsule on the plantar fascia, then half raise out of it using all of that soleus muscle strength and coming down into it, getting all that soleus muscle strain. This exercise will allow you to adapt long-term to create greater stiffness of the soleus, which will transfer more force to the Achilles long-term. Because notice, my joint is blocked, so all that can really stretch is that soleus muscle because at full knee bend, the gastroc is at a length of active insufficiency. It can't provide much force, so the soleus is now the main component that is being targeted in this exercise. Again, no weight for this exercise, but we're focusing on getting to a point where we can comfortably maintain 10 reps at 12 inches of front foot elevation. Simply increase the height to take the load off of this leg and put more of your weight into the poles to take load off this leg. Finally, we have the ankle squat. So now we're just performing the same exercise as the ankle split squat, but now just with two legs. This takes the emphasis off of the joint and more so to the muscle, the soleus muscle. Greater strain and greater potential for loading, getting maximal soleus strain in that bottom position and maximal soleus contraction at the top position. Besides the physics of the motion, I find it exciting to consider the clues to be found with the highest jumpers. Kador Ziani comes to mind with the foot brace protocols he has on his programming, but greater than the clues, I believe in the physics of the clues. We can reverse engineer and determine, quite simply, our own weak links according to specific structures when we utilize motions like this that shed light on our weak links. On the HG Science program, we'll include this exercise for eight reps with an ultimate goal of 20% body weight for all of those eight reps. Full contraction at the top and full stretch at the bottom. Simply regress by putting more of your weight into the poles and not going down as far. Other nooks and crannies on the ATG Science Blueprint that I utilize for the ankle to increase muscular stiffness include FHL calf raise, which stands for flexor hallucis longus calf raise, where we're isolating a specific muscle of the plantar flexor group that connects down to the big toe. Again, more strain experience and more stiffness development of each individual muscle will enhance the ability to transfer force to the tendon. That's why we're doing these things.
things. Hands on the wall, walk back your feet until you feel a light stretch on the back of the ankle. And all you're gonna do, keeping ankle, knee, hip, shoulder, and straight line, calf raise up. Because of the smallness of this muscle, we're not gonna add weight to this. End goal is 20 reps on each leg, full stretch at the bottom, full contraction at the top. Straight leg calf raise. Go to a wall, one foot length, two foot lengths out, and place the top curve of your heel elevation. We have ATG buddies at the back of your heel. Put the front of your foot on the wedge, put your opposite leg up in about 90 degrees of hip flexion. This will stabilize your pelvis and ensure no compensating between sides. Hands on the wall, calf raise up. Here, we're going for a full stretch at the bottom, full contraction at the top for 12 reps with an end goal of 20% of your body weight feeling like butter for all of those 12 reps. Tibialis raise, butt in the wall, walk your feet out until you feel a light stretch on the front of your ankles, hands on the top of your knees and contract that muscle coming up. We're getting strain on the muscle as we come down, stop, pause, and contraction on the muscle as we come up. End goal is doing the exercise on a decline bench, 20% of your body weight in additional load on a tip bar, straight legs, full stretch, pause at the bottom, and explode up for 20 total reps. Finally, we're back to the tendons. With the exercises described already, we've seen that the joint and muscles can become adequately prepped to transfer immense amount of forces to the tendon. But how do we translate this foundation of force potential in the joint and muscle to the tendon? Strain training. We can develop more strain when we have more muscles active in the motion. Again, we need to ensure that the motions we're performing are limiting joint motion and muscle motion to ensure what we cannot see is occurring. Tendon strain. This is the Achilles race. Set up in a rack with a bar on your back. I have a flybird rack and the J cups are pretty solid. So I set them upside down at a height that I'll have enough leverage to do a double leg calf raise isometric out of it. Then I just ditch one leg and maximally contract for three seconds. One, two, three, relax. And then shake it out a little bit, flip to the other leg and then boom, one, two, three. You have to have enough weight on the rack to ensure that your ankle is staying stable so that the muscle is pulling on the tendon. Perform three reps on each leg, three seconds at a time. If you do three sets of that, that's around 30 seconds of strain on the Achilles tendon on each leg. Research shows that three minutes a week is a good benchmark, but even that we want to scale. Start with 30 seconds, one session a week. If you have no issue, try another session and that'll bump you up to one minute. Over the course of eight weeks, build up to three reps, four sets of five seconds, three days per week, and you'll be right at that three minute mark, which will give you greater tendon stiffness by changing the material in the tendon in direct response to the demand. Strain on the tendon through muscular contraction, a contraction which increased its efficiency and stiffness generation potential through full range of motion training, which isn't even possible if you don't have the joint health required to reach those ranges. And you can expect to see everything here outlined in full on my blueprint eventually. Uh, currently I have options for joint and muscle and I'm slowly but surely adding in progressions for these tendon strain exercises. I anticipate it being finished before September, but I won't give any promises. I want to ensure it's done right. If you want to discuss training goals, I'm happy to help. Comment below what you need help with to overcome or shoot me a DM on Instagram. I'd love to troubleshoot things for you. My programming is less than $25 to start. The code and link to sign up is in the description of this video. It's a living program. The more that I learn, the more that I refine. Here's to a greater pursuit of truth.